Hi, everyone, and welcome to the January episode of Up in the Air. My name's Clinton Evans. I am the DroneBlocks Curriculum Specialist, but today I'll be the host of the show. The DroneBlocks Up in the Air segment is giving you a bird's eye view of drones in STEM. So I'm going to cover something cool that DroneBlocks has done. I'm going to show you something cool that a famous company has done with drones. I'm going to show you something very cool in the DroneBlocks simulator. I'm going to show you how you can see the new version of the DroneBlocks desktop app in action. And then I've got a challenge for you. So let's get into it. Earlier this month in January, Dave presented at the Bozies Drone Day. Looks like it was a very cool day and more schools have been added to the growing DroneBlocks community. Welcome aboard. Happy to have you. This is so cool. We have over 700 school districts. That's amazing. And the other thing that's really cool is Dave interned for Bozies 15 years ago. And then January, 15 years later, he's presenting the company to the educators there. How cool is that? Okay, now moving on. For those of you who are familiar with the company Ring, as you can see, great line of products, but then wait for it. All of a sudden, drone. Ha, cool is that? So if you haven't, there's a link down below that you can see. You can watch this commercial. If you've done a PD with me recently, you've probably seen this by now. There is now a flying drone that you can have at home that can be used to go to any room in your house. Just camera anywhere. And that is why drones in the classroom are so cool because our students today are going to be designing technologies like this in the future. Hey, some of them might be designing this as we speak. You never know. But it's really cool to see a real world application of drones. Now, what's new with the drone block simulator? Now, there's a new curriculum coming from Drone Legends, and that's going to be making use of this Egypt simulator. Now, those of you that have our curriculum, you can sign in and check this out already. Um, while you wait for the curriculum, it's pretty exciting. There's a bit of hieroglyphics and oh, what's that? There's the Drone Legends icon in that building. I wonder if Scott's hiding in there. Who knows? But this is very exciting. You get to explore ancient Egypt, solve puzzles, and use the drone blocks to help you get there. It's very cool. Moving on. Now, for those of you on a PC or Mac, if you've tried to open drone blocks previously, you will see this on your Chrome extension saying that old version of Chrome apps won't work anymore, which is real sad. And some people have just gone open anyways, but you'll notice it's glitchy and it doesn't work as well. Now, that takes us to the new drone blocks. Not only does it have more blocks, including sensing data, mission pads, and some sweet text and list functionality, it also has a console. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you can print text to the console in a sequence after you've executed some code. So some demo code here, we're flying in a square, and once we've flown in a square, it prints the statement square complete. So if I'm watching the drone and I'm watching my console, I will see it tell me that the square is completed, once it's finished. This is really cool when you have really big missions and you have your drone fly to various points. You can say arrived at point A before it moves on to point B and you can create a console of a log file of everything that your drone has done. There is a link in the description below to the getting started guide introducing you to this new version of drone blocks. One of the key features that is absolutely amazing, mission pad support connects to the drone as soon as the drone's connected on the Wi-Fi. So it streamlines the connection process. One of my favorites is that you can now work with text and print to the console. So if you haven't downloaded the new DroneBlocks desktop app on your PC or Mac, you can do so by following the link below. Now, before we wrap up this episode, there's just one real quick thing I have to tell you, and that's me issuing you or your students a challenge. What I want you to do is I want you to show me the most creative way that you can fly your drone in a square. So I'll leave that at that, nice and vague save your code, share your code with me, either post in the comments below, or you can post it on the community page under the January up in the air topic. But let me see your most creative way of flying in a square. And then in February, I'm going to pick someone's code to show as a very creative way. And it's so cool to be able to share with other educators out there. So thank you in advance. Now, if you like the idea of this up in the air series, or you just want to stay informed with what DroneBlocks is doing out there, including the Go One robotic dogs, if you haven't seen those before, check it out. You get to see the DroneBlocks robot dog in action. It is so cool. Look at it go. So that takes us to the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. Keep those drones in the air. Keep engaging your students. And I will see you next month.